Because uh, I'm Gail Renard, I was the writer, one of the writers from Famous Five, and also with Richard Sparks, we script edited, and I just got a call one day uh, from my agent saying, uh, they want to do a series of the Famous Five, and would you like to do it? And I thought, yeah, because <laughs> I really enjoyed the books, and uh, I, I didn't realise what I was getting into. <laughs> <laughs> you were getting into meeting all of us. Yes. And how long it will keep going on and on. <laughs> and, and I still can't get away from you all these years later. No, it was wonderful, and I loved the Famous Five books as a kid, and uh, I got to choose whichever one I wanted to do first, and I plumped four or five, go off to camp, because I loved it as a child. Mm -hmm. And there began began a few years, and then it was a matter of casting for all you lot. And you were involved in the casting process uh, a bit, weren't you? Yeah, f but, you know, sort of, we were, we were busy writing, so, you know, from a distance. But it was, it was difficult, because everybody knew what the Famous Five looked like from the illustrations. Mm. Uh, mm. So you were supposed to be in pencil and pointy feature. <laughs> <laughs> well, not that right, then. <laughs> well, there were certainly lots of auditions. Yes, I mean, it's I, you endless, know, wasn't I, it? Yes, yes, it was. I was auditioned three... Maybe four I was, times. I, was I had four to times. read. Yeah, I had to read with different people. Were you? Um, you two? I. I can't remember. I lost track of how many times, but it was huge amounts. It was very exciting because it was getting out of school for a start and. Um, <laughs> I'd say, I, said, I remember the very first one because having been to so many auditions and got nowhere before, because unlike you two, of course, I didn't do anything before coming into the Famous Five. And I remember coming into that audition and thinking, I must do something different in this one because I really want to get this. And I remember talking to Don Lever uh, afterwards yes. as we finished, and I said, Mr. Lever, excuse me, what do I have to do to get a part in something? You know, please just... <laughs> and he just killed himself laughing, and I'm sure that he remembered me because of the 5,000 or so kids that were called into audition, I guess you just have to stand out somehow in that first round. Did and I'm pretty certain that's how I got through to the later stages. Did either of you have that thing where James and Don said at the audition, when you come back for the next audition, I want you to tell us a joke. I want you to go away no, and prepare. Oh, he, he said, he, he, uh, there was a group, of, I think about four or five of us went in from my drama school, and he said, I want you all to go away and think of the best quite lengthy joke and then the next time when you come back I want you to tell us that joke so it was a way of getting us to tell a story a way of getting us to see how um. narratively based it wasn't like knock knock who's there it had to be quite a sort of involved was long that joke more about Dick's character was that for people who no, were auditioning because at for the Dick, time I was auditioning for, for Julian I was reading Julian you yeah. see I auditioned for Anne and then I auditioned for George, believe it or not. They were, they were they, struggling know, to find somebody They were to struggling play. to find, because yes. the very, I remember the very last audition we did, and the three of us met at that audition, and they were clearly mm -hmm. pairing the four, three mm -hmm. of us up to see whether we looked like brother and sister and could yeah. interact. And then various people came in to read George, one of whom was Michelle, and one of whom I know was Charlotte right. Avery, who then who came, came and later, did Smuggler's yeah. Top later. Um, and, and it was like... They, that final bit of the audition process was they got us That's and they right, needed yeah, to yeah. find that final yeah, piece of the jigsaw. Yeah. Well, there was one other problem, or not problem, but because it was a ger German co-production uh, with ZDF uh, and we had to have a quota of German actors, which was very fair because they graciously gave us nice money. Uh, so that's why Uncle Quentin was German, which mm -hmm. sounds very unkind, but Richard and I used to have a lot of fun about of all the characters to make German a British secret <laughs> <laughs> a scientist <laughs> having Working every for the yes. yes a <laughs> post war called Quentin the most English of names yes. <laughs> so we used to have fun with with that but Michelle was half German wasn't she yes so yeah, that and I think that helped as well because it was difficult to cast George I seem to recall uh, yes, yeah, yes, I, I certainly know that I, I had yeah. to read for her you know, just in case they, you know, I had to play And George they also instead. created that, um, the Rogers character That's for, right. for Freddie von Fun. Mm -hmm. So and that was yes. another yes. part of the German. Still working, yeah. uh, working and doing really well in Germany, so oh, he's still lovely. very, very active. I remember meeting you all for the first time, and it must have been on the shoot, because we didn't have a problem. I don't, I don't what about Battersea Park? Didn't that was when? That was series two. That was series two. Yes. I would have thought that was serious. One. No, no, well, I did for a long time, and yeah. it was Gail that, that proved to me otherwise yeah. because there's a photograph of us in our costumes and then all our season two costumes. And then I looked oh, through yes. all this 
paperwork that I've got piled up. Um, and uh, yes, the, the Battersea thing, the, the, the going the on the, yeah. the, with the, um, with the hot air balloon, yeah, the hot air balloon that never happened. Yes, and we, the were, we were going to put the caravans. kids up in a hot air balloon. Uh, you know, your safety meant nothing. <laughs> oh, I've got some great safety <laughs> meaning nothing stories. We were so here, excited. I was. I really have to apologise <laughs> because I was watching Five Go Down to the Sea, which we can talk about after, and... God, you were all expendable. Yes. Health yeah. and safety wouldn't exist. It yes. didn't exist. I mean, there's a there's oh. one episode, and I can't off the top of my head think which one it is, but they put you and I, It was the, the episode was running under or whatever, it was a two-parter. It might have been... It, I think it was... Sea. It was The Ledge. Yeah, and they put you and I an on the top yeah, of, um, yeah. of Exbury and said... That's it. Anne needs rescuing, so can you walk along the front yeah. ledge of Exbury House? So we're, what, three stories high? I just saw it. And we are there going up to that, to that, across yes. the top. There's no, no wires, no ropes, there's no net. We are literally on the edge of the building, and if we either of us had gone like that, we yeah. have fallen off the front of the building. And, it looks and I am rescuing you, and you're supposed to be going, oh, I'm scared, I'm scared. And I'm going, no, no, <laughs> come on, just keep moving. And of course, it's the other way around. Okay. You were completely fine about it. And I'm sitting there going, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. It's with heights. There's another episode, uh, Wonderful Time. They stick me in a tower. They throw a rope ladder out of the top of this tower, and there's me and an act called Lee and Eagles. And we have to climb through this little slit of a window. I'm really envious you got and to going, do that. Well, thanks. <laughs> I wasn't envious. I was up there going, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. <laughs> and Leo and he goes, just as we're about to climb onto this ladder for this, this take, and yes, you're all down there with the, the circus folk looking up at us. And Leon turned around to me and says, I'm so glad you're here to this. He says, I'm terrified of heights, so it's really good to know that there's somebody here who isn't frightened of heights. And they're going, you have no idea. And, we, and it was a 30-foot climb down a rope ladder with this, this camera filming us. And I think nothing of it then. It was an exciting adventure. Looking back at it now, you'd go, you could never do that. With, no. with, with grown-up actors, no, you no, wouldn't do that now. It would all be stunt people and green screen and ropes and safety stuff. We did have stunt people, stuff. though, didn't we? I mean, then, when Michelle used to fall down holes, we had... Um, Andy used to be the stunt man, didn't he? Andy, the oh, driver yes. and the runner, yes. Runner. yes. yes. And, yeah. and, and for, there was Stuart, who did a couple of cycling stunts for various of us. I remember yeah. once he had to dress up, I think it was you. Oh, or maybe right. he had to dress up as Michelle. He certainly had to get into drag on a bicycle and skid a bicycle mm -hmm. and roll over. And I know he doubled for me at one point yeah. on, on a bike scene, yes. No, but the poor one was Timmy, because the ones I was watching again, it's great, because you all have to scurry up these ropes and ladders. And George always turns around to Timmy, who's last, and say, well, you can take your time coming up to me. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <How? laughs> what? <laughs> no, a brilliant shot in, um, yeah. in, in Camp, which you wrote. Um, where, a little respect. Where, with, 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 yeah, right, I'm sure Timmy didn't have respect. But that ladder, yes, and and Michelle yeah. is hoiking this dog, <laughs> and you can see the dog's just going, Where am I going? because it's a part of a set or something. And she's trying to pretend this dog is going to climb up this completely flat ladder like this, like dogs climbing. Gary, Gary, you're spoiling a million children. <laughs> yeah, it's all Fantasies. real, all real, all real. But, but yeah. coming back to the question that was posed, how, how did you find out you got the part then, Jennifer? I think I just got a phone call, you know. Uh, probably to my agent and then my agent phoned me. But I think I I think I felt towards the end, I think I sort of knew that I that I was gonna get a part, you know, sort of mm. towards the, the last audition. Um, and I remember being very excited but also being very worried because I had said that I could ride a horse <laughs> in the audition and then I got the part and actually Mm. And wasn't too good at riding that. a horse <laughs> I did exactly the same lie can you ride a horse, yes can you gallop on a horse, yes, yes. going home to my <clears> mum <throat> going I need to ride a horse yes. and luckily uh, we had friends who ran a riding stable oh. and so every day after school for about 12 weeks my mum would drive us over oh, right. to this riding stable and I would go from having never even touched a horse and being really? slightly alarmed by horses so by the end of 12 weeks I could gallop and show jump goodness and I could do all of that and then we did the stupid thing and we never used it <laughs> no we didn't did we you only wrote one thing but we uh, I, I did exactly the same I think Michelle did as well didn't she we uh, said we could we could ride horses and did exactly the same thing went up to the local riding stables and just crammed into a good ride yeah. and yeah and like you was quite but disappointed I think all, as you say all actors so the, the, the great line must always be any actor that's ever asked anything can you do A, B or C yes because no actor in it's their right say. mind is going to say no <laughs> <laughs> say, oh no no I, I can't climb tall 
trees and I'm not yeah. I'm not scared of heights of course I'm not scared of all these things that they're going to ask you but no one's ever going to say they can't do something but the famous, that'd be stupid. No, the famous five never wore riding hats or hard hats did they well they didn't but then they didn't there wasn't or yeah, life yeah, politically, no, politically yeah. correct to those days so I I was um, I remember my agent because unlike you, I didn't have any idea. I mean, I was nervously excited. I knew I was in with the running because we'd been down to the final bits and all met up and things. But really had never believed I could actually get it. And then I, I got home from school and my agent was coming down the path and I thought something exciting's happening. Mm. She actually came to visit mm. to tell me. And I remember as she came in and, they, and we made tea and she said, right, she said, I've got news for you. She said, you've got the part. And I was like, wow. She said, but she said, you've got to realize this is gonna change your life. And I thought, bah! How can it change my life? And here we are, 30 years later, still changing my life and still being very much a part of everything on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. I, th I didn't realise, you know, how big it would be, yeah. mm. really. I mean, no part of me had any inkling that it would, you know, have taken off like it did take off. Mm. It's, you know, it's still popular mm. Mm. today. Mm. I, just I think I must popular. have had a... Amazing. Because I'd read the books and I knew lots of friends at school and everything who were big Enid and Blind fans. We were all big Enid and Blind fans and I loved the Famous Five. And So I had an idea that this was going to be something that, that ITV were going to be pushing to the hills. Mm -hmm. But no, could never have imagined things like, like going to that book signing that we yes, did between yes, series. I, yes. And that yeah. queue of people yeah. in yeah. Southampton. Yeah. Yeah. And just yeah. in that shop. And we opened Fates and things yeah. like that. And the Saturday yeah. morning. The Saturday morning. Yes, that's right. Oh, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. that was it was that like was a celebrity, wasn't it, for uh, yeah. six months or so? That yeah. was the most yeah. amazing yeah. thing doing yeah. yeah. Banana. Ah. Did you get to do any of these things, Gav? Uh, I'm just trying to think. I remember giving interviews, probably gave interviews for TV Times and all that. And looking and everything. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I just remember enjoying it all. And also remember, because most children's series was done studio-based and video, and suddenly we had a, the most mm -hmm. expensive mm -hmm. children's series all shot on mm -hmm. film. That was unheard of. It was the most expensive children's yeah. series to date at that point. Yeah, it was the first time I'd written on film, you know, for film. And it was fantastic. And, you know, Richard Sparks and I had known each other for years because we both started on the Oxbridge, you know, sort of the footlights sort of thing. And we just had a ball, and yeah. also putting comedy in. That was a funny thing watching, again, Five Go Down to the Sea. Do you mean there was comedy in there? It was the way it was delivered. <laughs> <laughs> it was comedy in the script. We probably killed yeah. it. Yeah, really. Squashed it. Squashed but it sounds like it was a bit of a groundbreaker then. Oh, you know, yes. In... And also, without being whatever, because it was film, it paid a fortune. And it was a buyout for us at the time, but we, it paid us a fortune. And our, I think it was assistant film editor, went on to be, who was Nigel Pickard, went on, went on to be the controller of ITV. We, we, we were sort of like doing a movie. Yes, because we it was film, we were doing a movie every two weeks. Every two-parter mm -hmm. was a one-hour movie. Mm -hmm. Shot on film, that, that's quite something. And the actors, mm -hmm. we had every oh, we had major British character yes. actor, I mean, again, that you would have on any film. Phenomenal, yes. yeah. And, yeah. and a lot of them were in the Avengers and things like that, because we had the Avengers producer and director. I mean, again, these were major people. We were so lucky as when we were kids. I didn't know any out. better at the time. Having not oh, done anything know. before, yeah. I came into this and thought, this is how yeah. it all works. And then the next thing I did after, which was a French documentary filmed in a studio and it was like what the hell happened I was doing this which was brilliant yes. and now I'm doing this so I think we suddenly were filming or started to film when we got a directive from somewhere going put the kids in safety gear because that was a very that sudden... It was a bell, but yeah. it, it happened halfway through the first series. They suddenly thought of all the safety stuff we yeah. had to do on water. Because I'm just trying to think of even the opening credits, which I could be wrong, because I think you'd I'm, I'm not wearing it in the opening credits, no. I'm not wearing it. When I fall in that water, I'm not wearing it. No. But I that was no filmed much later. When I, when I should have been, we'd already done... We'd recorded mm. Hike by that point. But mm. I think... Oh. Dispensation was granted so that if I fell in the water and drowned, well, <laughs> and I have what a memorable time to see you. That's right, in the opening you. sequence. You see, because that no. was it. Because I think we'd shot that, and the powers be, that be somewhere, compliance saw it mm. and went, get those kids into safety right. gear. Um, you never know. Actually, when you think about it, all of us were doing potentially dangerous things. You were swimming oh, across yeah. a river, you were on a, a horse or Dickie Bandit's shoulders. Mm. I fell into water. 
And Michelle does that amazing stunt with that bike, yeah. bringing it to an yeah, end, when she could have gone straight over the, the handlebars on yeah, that. Excuse me, you were on Dickie Bamber's shoulder. He was our stage manager. <laughs> Would you like to tell us? Yeah, well, I think it was because the opening sequence was filmed, I think, after we had done a shot of sort of galloping on horses off into the distance. And I had had such a bad experience, actually, on that horse. Um, you know, galloping back because they put us on those horses towards the end of the day, and certainly Michelle's horse and my horse, it it just went back to the stables, heading for oh. for supper, and it was terrifying. We could not stop mm. these things, and I've never been so scared or up to that point oh. so scared in my life as this horse just galloping off. Was that the was that a closing sequence or was that one of the that was mystery more? That was mystery more. Yeah. And then I think they said, okay, you know, I mean, a, a day later or a couple of days later, they said, well, we need to do the opening sequence and I think I was terrified about getting on that horse again um, and so they said okay well we'll put you on the stage <laughs> the, the sort of managed back and um, that'll teach you to feel do you and that, and that was that. <laughs> so, that, so that opening sequence I didn't know that. Yeah, because in fact that horse had been so dangerous and had been really difficult um, which was I the one where you you oh, and gosh. You and Michelle were supposed to be on the back of a horse together. Yes, that was somebody else that doing was stunt that. Riders, yes. was it? Yeah, that was mm. stunt riders. I, I think yeah. because basically we couldn't ride. <laughs> well, I do feel guilty. <laughs> good, good. You put us through this torment, Gail. It's all your fault. Well, I do because I, like I said, when I was when I watch now, I think you were children. Mm. Yes, you know. but bear in mind, yeah, we were children. We were 13, 14 years old. But this was the summer. This was, was there was no school. It was the two of the best amazing. summers that we'd ever had. Yes. Yeah. All we thought was, woohoo, yes. we're out there, we're having fun. I don't think there was ever a point where anyone asked to do anything and any of us went, no, we're not going to do that. No. Everything was an adventure for us as kids. Everything was, I, th I think, you know, we were almost being competitive with each other. Certainly you and I were probably mm. very, very competitive to see how far we could go, what yeah, we could do, yeah. what was the most adventurous and exciting and slightly dangerous mm. thing we could do. Mm. If there was running to be done, you know, oh, can, can you go from there to there? We'd run. We wouldn't walk. Yeah. We'd run. My favourite moment, I think, uh, has to be from my favourite episode, which is uh, Five Go Off on a Hike. Uh, sorry, Gail. Um, <laughs> And it is, it's the raft. It, it is that woodland area and Mike Connor, the director, who was my favourite director, he was just brilliant. And Mike saying, OK, guys, there's the raft, there are some paddles, four of you get on there and off you go. And we're sort of doing this, standing up, doing all of this. And I swear, that raft, instead of going along the water like that, is just going like that. And you three are sort of at the back of it, doing scenes. I have very little dialogue. You're all... Rabbit, 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 and the dog and I are at the front of it. <laughs> and, and if you watch this on, on, on the DVD, you will see that Toddy is sitting on the edge of this raft, looking at this water, and, and the dog is just going, no, 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 this is not good. Dogs do not like water. <laughs> and he's kind of doing this on the raft, trying to get away from the water. And I'm standing there watching, going, yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to sing. Could you just say your lines a bit faster? We are going to sing. And I just have memories of... Because that was a time when we had two frogmen, and they were in the water, not for our safety, but to keep the raft afloat, and they would go under the raft, and they would push us <laughs> up. And I would be paddling and seeing these two faces and the, these, these black, skin-tight, whatever they are, diving things, under the water with their hands, just pushing this raft, because this raft at the front would keep dropping in the water, it was at the front or the back, it was where I was standing, would keep sinking. And the dog and I just going, oh. So that's kind of my favourite memory of it. It was just, that was exciting and scary at the same time. Oh. I like being scared. Oh. I like doing things that scared me. As long as it doesn't involve heights. Heights, yes. yes. <laughs> Jennifer? Um, I just have lots of happy memories. You know, in a way, nothing in particular. I just... I just remember being very excited to not be living at home, you know, to be living with a group of other people. Um, I mean, lots of lots of lovely times, sort of after filming, um, you know, because certainly we all, you know, we got on fairly well, and I got yes. on very well um, with Michelle, so we had some lovely times. I remember going off to locations singing. Bohemian Rhapsody. Rhapsody. <laughs> yes, yes. 
yes. I, you know, I every have morning. Su- I, yeah, yeah, I have yeah. such a fond memory of that, just yeah. sitting in this in mini bus van, and yes, just yeah. singing, Bohemian, you yeah. know, trying to all the all the words. We kind of done it every morning yeah. now. I mean, it must have just been for a period of time. I think we did second series. I think we do you almost remember? did every so And John remember. driving us and yeah, that's thinking right. yeah, that's he must have been thinking oh, this wretched song again. But no, we did. We did it. Every, every but it was just I, I remember feeling quite free really and just and, mm. and just yeah. you know enjoying yes. enjoying that you know um, yeah. like you Jennifer everything about those two years were, was exciting and and you know mm. good times and bad times but it was all just so brilliant and Gary just like you said it one huge adventure and whenever anyone's asked me about you know what about the adventures that you went on in the famous five well we didn't do those adventures but we had our own even bigger adventure being yes, there for just two being, years yes. living it yeah. and not even realizing what we were doing or what an impact it mm. would have just enjoying all of those mm. things so in terms of in terms of my favourite moment, well, I don't want to copy you, but the raft actually was one of my favourite moments as well. But within that, within that episode, I also had one of my worst moments filming, which was the weekend that I went away and got horrendously sunburned, if you remember. I remember. Yeah. And I came back having gone bright red, so they damped me down, and then they decided to punish me. They'd put this huge, great rucksack on my back and make me Aww. walk for about three or four hours in the morning around with this heavy rucksack on, which seemed heavier than when I put it down on the Friday night before. So that was uh, sort of a good and a bad. But the other thing from behind the scenes, I remember uh, I remember the dinners that we used to have in, in um, Gatewood, and, and I remember particularly us all sitting around the table together, which, again, lots of people don't do these days. And we had uh, spaghetti bolognese or something <laughs> that day. Going to yeah. say. And, um, and Michelle and I were having one of our usual robust conversations, and I think we were all getting involved in this very robust and I, I heated, suspect but... Jennifer and I were sitting back going, let <laughs> get on with it. No, I suspect you were probably stoking it up a little bit with odd As comments. If we would ever stir it. And, and you two know, but and Gail, you may not know, and certainly the audience don't know, but then Michelle decided she was going to tip a whole bowl of uh, spaghetti bolognese all over my head which was which was the most amazing memory and the most amazing fun i think we all just broke down in <laughs> fits of laughter and then went off and caused mayhem and havoc around the house for that day but you're right gary we did deliver what we had to deliver i believe with the utmost professionalism but oh, we yeah. also lived the life of wild kids and then a wild family when we were in the uh, in the house but again nothing that nothing that we get arrested for it was all just really good but but high spirited fun i think well, you were all great, but the whole thing about the famous five and you and the way I grew up, that's the way kids grew up. Yeah. You were free. You, you know, you had the sense to go out there and you could, could have adventures and, you know, mm-hmm. and you, you know, sort of echoed the famous five. You were away from your parents mm-hmm. all together having a great time and it was I just always remember eternal sunshine yeah it was it was, yeah, it, was, years, it? It, was yeah. It, yeah, was it was and also I do you know I remember with real fondness the adults around oh yes um you know, because everyone was lovely to us, weren't they? Yes. You know, I mean, the wardrobe, the makeup people, you know, the cameramen, the sound, you know, and and because we worked with them so much, you know, I mean, they oh, yeah. were just real, like, friends. You but you, you were also all very sweet. You were lovely kids. I mean, there wasn't one of you that you wanted to go, <laughs> you know. I mean, we always joke, Richard and I would come down and buy you ice creams, and we thought we were being awfully grown up, but we weren't that much older <laughs> than you, you know. No, no. But it's, uh, no, one of my favourite things, and Gary can probably tell me which episode it was from, I was watching from the sidelines, and I said to James Gatwood, who was our executive uh, producer and I said that chap that older actor chap is very very good has he done anything else before and James said that's Patrick Troughton he was Doctor (laughs) Who (laughs) five run away together that was it uh, I was very young and very naive, but we had some wonderful character actors. Mm. We had the best. We, we just did. had the cream of, of 70s TV mm. actors. I and remember Alfie Bass. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. yeah, and and actually, I think of Alfie Bass who is, <coughs> almost he daily, he? I have to say, him? because he taught me how to tie a dressing gown. <laughs> Would you like and to elaborate? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, how did you get into this situation? Because he must have been. There must have been, I think he was wandering around and I was just sitting waiting to to do a scene and he must have been having to wear a dressing gown of some sort. I hope so. Um, And 
he sort of tied it in a way. I mean, I think I'd always tied mine in a knot, you know. And he said, oh, you don't want to do that. You know, it takes too long to, to undo. So he just showed me how to do this sort of compromise of knot between a knot and a bow. And I do my dressing gown up like that every day. And I, I have Alfie Bass to thank. How sweet. Oh, yeah, I, I what did Alfie Bass do? He was in uh, it was Wonderful with Animals, Time. wasn't it? Yes, it was with the monkey, Mr. Wu and the monkey and everything yeah. else. Oh, yes, all, all filmed at, at Gatewood, actually. Yeah. Most, of the, most of the people that, that did season one came back for season two. We had a different lighting cameraman for season two. Uh, we had a different producer. Don Lever did series one and Sid Hayes yes. did series two. We had a couple of different directors in series two because uh, we had David, someone whose name's just gone out of my head, did an episode, and we had Pat Jackson, who was oh, yes. an absolute oh. genius of a director, did Demon's Rocks. Um, and we had different, uh, we had Mo for the second series on costume on instead costume. of Frankie. Yeah. Um, but apart from that, it was pretty much the same people. Different chaperone. Oh, different chaperone because oh. Dee had done series one, and then we had two um, in series two, didn't we? Yes. Sadly. Yeah. Um, but remember, because we had the cream of British film, and also all those ITC nineteen sixties uh, film series. They used to do the Avengers, Danger Man, The Prisoner, and we had the producers and directors from that. That's right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I mean, what, see, I, what I learned. Just had no idea. I, I didn't really. either. Oh, yeah. See, I was so excited yeah, when really, Peter yes, Duffel first started oh, yes. directing us. And I was thinking, Peter Duffel, Peter Duffel. And I remember going home that first weekend and kind of looking through whatever I looked through in those days and realising the pedigree of Peter Duffel and all these things that I'd watched as a kid that he'd been responsible for, and being so excited to work oh, with Peter Duffel. Um, and the same with Don and James and, and the second series, you know, Sid and, and particularly Pat Jackson. Um, and it was, it was just amazing, the, these, oh, these fantastic yes. people. But you've also got to remember that, that Southern TV mm. had the most fantastic technical people. Yes, all, those, all those cameramen and sound people and editors mm. and everything mm. were the cream of ITV <coughs> drama because they, they were, everything that Southern Television did during the 60s were film productions. Those yes. are things like Free Wheelers and things, all film productions. So that was the one little part of ITV where everything was was, was the, the best quality people you could get. I and when wish you think I'd paid of the more attention in those days, because that's amazing, the stories that you've got, and the fact you knew about these directors, where I just showed up and yes, I think you did as well, Yes, I did, but we you were a kid. Difference, no, you know, I mean, that's a, if we had have known that. I know, I was very aware that I was learning also film writing from the best. And it was very funny, because being film people, and you'd be out early, whenever they wanted to get me, they'd ring me at five in the morning, before the shoot, because mm. uh, you know this was before answering machines and all the rest. <laughs> and they mobile knew, phones. And they knew how to get me, which was five in the morning or before. But it was uh, it was glorious. But the scripts did change between the first and second series, if you noticed. Uh, they were much better in the second series because we were taking more liberties because mm. uh, we stuck closer to the books. And after the first series, the Blight and the State were very happy with us and trusted us more. So we could, I mean, we didn't deviate from the plots much, well, but we c we could take liberties because um, books are not film scripts. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there would be holes in Enid's, you know, in, in some of the later ones, I hate to say. But did you also, for that second series, presumably you and the two Richards and Gloria all had in your minds what we were like? And did that yes. shape at all the way you were writing stuff? Well, it stuff? did, because Richard, Richard Sparks and I were really in control of the scripts by then, and we decided who did what, and we divided up between us, and we did the, the lion's share anyway. Uh, and to be honest, we never met with Richard Carpenter and Gloria Torres, I think. I don't even remember, if, did Gloria write for the second series? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, they must have sent them in. Um, I mean, they did some wonderful work. But I think, yeah, we had a handle on it of what worked and what didn't work. Mm. And also, we knew how the whole setup worked. Uh, we had a lot of fun. I mean, the second series was even more, much, much more fun for us. Because I think, personally, the second series was much more fun for me yeah. to do partly because we were in Gatewood and that was better than being in a hotel. We sitting at this house we were living in and that yeah. was a lot more fun. But the second series, I think we all, it seemed to me, we jailed much better. We mm. were much... We were securer. Yes. We were successful by then. We were happy. I think we were yeah. happy. And yeah. I think the look of the show, we had better costumes in the second series, without a doubt. 
the poly- end of polyester. it was devastating. <laughs> the end, though, when I, uh, finishing that finishing oh. that second series and knowing there were no more books, so there could be no more. At least I was told there was going to be no. But that was just devastating. I, I remember my dad came and got me on the end of the last day and took me away, just him and I, for a weekend in, in the New Forest, bizarrely. But just him and I in a cottage somewhere because it just took me two days just to recover oh, from the fact that this yeah. whole part of my life, two years of my life, had just mm-hmm. stopped and there wouldn't be any more. Unless right. you're going to tell me otherwise now. No, there was I a think... third series of <coughs> the wings. Yes, yeah, so we, we didn't tell you because you were <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, these two women have made it, yeah. yeah, we love it. <laughs> yes, yes, we've got all these secret episodes that we don't let anyone see because no. we don't want Marcus to realise. I think for a nanosecond in time, we were hoping we could go on with it yeah. and invent new stories. And the Enid Blyton estate, quite rightly for them, I suppose, said no. You know, we really did hope we could go on. Uh, and we and I know Southern wanted it. They desperately oh, wanted a yes. third series, and, oh, and all that production them. team, and we oh, would all have done it. So everyone I've wanted it. Oh yes, the, everyone wanted this? the third series, and the estate said no. You've done the canon. You've yeah. done the books. Right. There is you, no one does anything else. And then a year, eighteen months later, they changed their minds, and they suddenly turned around to this this. French author, French, yes. and said, oh, we'll go and write us another 13 it famous was very odd. Mm. And you think, why didn't you make that decision yeah. a year before? Because then yes. we, you and Richard, mm. would have gone off we and written off, yeah. a 10,000 times better stuff than any of those French books. Yes. But also, we'd have got a great third series out of it. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I think there was enough in The Famous Five to make oh, a third yes. series. We, Easily. We, would have, we Easily. still wouldn't have got tired and looked old and haggard or well, anything like that. That was the only fear about I was looking at you all for yes, that you were growing we were up. Growing. Yeah. You know, yes. we, could, we could only give but you c- so cigarettes to stunt your growth for so long. <laughs> you know? yeah. But the kids do grow up and the Famous Five grew up and the Famous Five became middle-aged. But I think that's also a indicative of how brilliant the original books are in that what Enid Blyton created with those four characters and that dog is something that is timeless and you can yes. keep going back and you can keep remaking mm. and you can keep updating and I think that is the only way forward for something like that. I think when they did in the 90s, they did the remake, but they, they set it back in Enid Blyton time, mm. and it didn't work. Yeah. And the reason it yeah. didn't work is actually with a series like The Famous Five, you have to actually push it forward, which, which upsets purists and upsets people the world over, probably. But actually, as, as a, you know, if you were to write what The Famous Five is in one paragraph, you would have to update it all the time. You'd have to keep setting it in modern times, because Otherwise, it falls completely flat mm. because a bunch of kids running around, dropping smugglers and everyone's friendly with the police and blah blah blah, just doesn't ring true. So you have to modernise it. You have to adapt it. But having said that, what was funny in some of the episodes I was watching again is because they seemed old-fashioned for a bit, but now when you say they could be pirates, that is sadly <laughs> topical. <laughs> yes. yeah. you yes. know, so it's funny because it takes on a different meaning, mm-hmm. but it works in the same way. And that's, but that's yeah. one of the things about our series that I think is bringing new people back to it now. Yeah. It's this feeling of nostalgia, the fact oh, yeah. we've got genuine 70s look. Mm-hmm. So many people are coming to the series afresh from not having really watched it in, in, in the old mm-hmm. days because it's that genuine 70s feel, the 70s bikes, the 70s clothes, the 70s looks. That's a big selling point for the series. It is, but also, remember, there's, there's an, a timelessness about The Famous Five because you get four kids out in the countryside, and when we'd film, you know, you'd try not to film the airplanes and the overhead power lines, so it could mm, be any time. Mm, and mm. you get four kids in jeans and anoraks on bikes and tents stuffing their face with a dog next to them. <laughs> and the stuffing their face <laughs> with a dog? I don't remember that scene. <laughs> the dog was next to them. Did you ever feed Timmy? Always. Always. Yeah, bits of sausage. Yeah, your sport. Oh, that was famous. Bits of sausage. We all carried bits of sausage. I used to have them secreted on our costumes at various points to make him jump up and be friendly. I didn't know that. You didn't think he loved us that much, really, did you? (laughs) No, it was all to do with sausage. Ben would sit there and he'd in the folds of our anoraks he'd hide a piece of sausage and Toddy would therefore come up and put his paws on you and he wouldn't eat the sausage but he would be there because he was so well trained, he would be there, he'd be there, and the moment it was like someone would go cut, and, and then, then he'd, yes, <laughs> yeah. and, and he knew yeah. that his reward was to do that. But it was good because it was telling Gosh. Toddy where he should go and, and do mm. his, his mm. acting. They did the same with me with you. That's how I did <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it. You covered us with bits of sausage, and you came and yeah. go, oh, yeah. right, write this, write this, here's a page yes. of script, here's a page of script. Yeah. Yeah. I often wondered how writers work, yeah. that's how it's done, is it? So that's directors. Do we remember anything else about directors? 
We had some really good ones. I mean, I'm trying to think. Uh, my favourite was Mike Connor. He well, was he lovely. gave us freedom. Yes. I seem to remember. He was a mad I old hippie, really. Yes, wasn't I, he? think, <laughs> I think we had more laughs. How did we get um, on with Don with Lever then? Because I, I seem to Don remember Don Lever. Yeah, I remember him being the one I think I liked most. Yeah. Don was fantastic. James Gatwood was always very fierce whenever he directed. Really? Yeah, I remember him he, telling me off once. Well, because, because he was the executive. He called me the wrong name. I was a bit wary. I, you yeah, know, it, yeah. Yes, it had a different feel about it when he directed yeah. us, I think, because he was the big wig. He got good wig. effects, though. I mean, still still as good as everybody else, but it just, yeah, felt a little bit See, scary. I love being directed by James, but I know what you mean because I, I could see that he had this kind of slight. Um, austereness mm. to him, authority. Mm. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I reacted very well to that in him. I thought I, I kind of, oh, I like working for you. He, he had a very good sense of humour. Um, he could be quite waspish, and he, I think I can be quite waspish. I think Richard and I think got he on very well with James. Didn't yes, he? James oh, and Richard yeah, used to go for a him. beer together, didn't they? Yeah, it was. Uh, and also, what's sweet watching the famous five back is you called all the, the men sir. And quite right. Yes. <laughs> it was, you know, and you, that you go, that dates it almost more than anything. But that was, that was how lives were lived. Oh, I mean, yeah. you've, you've said this earlier on about, you know, isn't it mad that they can go out and jump on horse without hats and go, mm. go out in boats? But, but we did. And I yeah. think kids did in those days. And these days, kids are locked in their bedrooms, oh, molly coddled, yeah. and don't get out to do anything and don't take mm. any risks. And I heard a report on the radio this morning That's saying, right more children are in A&E from falling out of their beds than they are falling out of trees these yes. days. And I think that was, it was almost, we were the flagship, the final passing mm. of freedom for kids. After our, our era into the 80s, it started to become more and more stranger danger and road aware and all these things that have ki meant that kids are now locked up in their bedrooms with <coughs> computers and playstations mm. and TVs. And that freedom that we've got, I just don't think people get it anymore. No, it's... Uh and, but look at all the baddies that you ran into, smugglers and pirates. And, and one day they're going to come back and get us. <laughs> <laughs> I finished and retired from acting age 15, only to start again three years ago. So I had 30 years doing a sensible job. Um, decided that I needed to come back and do what I loved doing most, which was acting. So I sort of chucked in the sensible job and uh, found myself an agent, got back into Spotlight and got started again. And to some great success as well, I was in the German feature film, The Film Freund. Uh, I do a regular internet TV drama, a number of adverts. We did a small West End play. Um, uh, there are a couple of biopics and I've got four feature films now that I'm in conversation for over 2012. 13 and 14. Uh, so, um, so yes, very much back into acting, very much back into this, this whole sort of life. And uh, if anyone's watching with a great film they want to cast someone for, I'm your man. <laughs> <laughs> may, I, may I ask you, Marcus, uh, why you decided not continue acting after this series? And actually, I, I sort of mentioned the experience I had finishing in The Famous Five, then going off to do a documentary and suddenly realizing that actually the life we had lived had been the top of the tree. You know, going to book signings and uh, going to Saturday morning shows and TV interviews and real film and great directors, fantastic actors, to then going to something which was back of a warm studio, no one took any notice of me. It was, I suddenly thought, hang on a minute, I need to do something other than this because actually this is probably what it's really like. So I, I just went out and um, built a business and then in 2007 sold my business and decided time was to uh, get back in here and do what I love doing. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I've, I've stayed in writing and uh, I've written a lot of other television shows, uh, series, both comedies, a lot of comedy and a lot of children's. And I won a BAFTA award for one of my BBC series, which I'm very proud of and mention on every occasion I can. <laughs> uh, Quite rightly. <clears throat> I also write stage plays and books. and. Uh, lately, I've written a book called Give Me a Chance about my teenage experiences with John Lennon. I gate-crashed his bed in in Montreal when I was a teenager uh, to get in, an interview for my school paper. And uh, I was asked to stay, and some, I became friends with John, and he helped me to become a writer. And also, he ended up giving me his original lyrics to give peace a chance. So uh, it's all in the book and I spend a lot of time, I mean, still writing, but also talking about John's peace message, which is my way of thanking him. So, yeah, still busy. Uh, Jennifer? Um, I gave up acting um, pretty much straight after The Famous Five, really. 
Um, and I am now a primary school teacher. So, yeah, I teach. And I'm happy, you know, happy doing that, really. Um, I go abroad a lot, actually, with, with my husband. And we, um, we've done a lot of work in Nepal, uh, working with sort of untrained teachers in Nepal. Um, so working in the foothills of the Himalayas, which uh, suits me. Um, May I ask you the same question as I asked Marcus? Yeah, why did I give up? Yeah. I, it was all I had known up until I was 14. You know, I had had no other life. And I felt that I wanted to discover other areas, really. I, I felt I didn't have a, a very strong education, and I wanted to develop that, really. I just, my interests were going elsewhere. Um, do I regret it? Yes, sometimes, sometimes I sort of think, oh, I wish, you know, I was doing voiceovers or, or the occasional thing now. Um, but at the time I gave up, it, it was the right decision. Um, yeah, so, you know, things are, things are very different. It's never too late for voiceovers, right? No, let's hope not. Yes, <laughs> let's hope not. I would, yeah. And, you know, radio work interests me, actually, and, um, yeah, that, that's sort of an area where my face isn't seen, but my <laughs> voice is heard, I think. What was your face? Yeah, well. It's lovely to see your face on the screen. Thank you. Yeah. And so you yes, shall you again. I'm sure you will. Yes. Mm, yeah, I'm open to offers. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I did. I, I'm, I'm the one that stayed in acting. I carried on acting for another four or five years, I think. Um, I did a couple of TV things. I spent two years uh, at the National Theatre. Um, and then one day went, I enjoy acting. I'm probably not the greatest actor in the world, and I'd rather move behind the scenes. So I then sort of found myself in a variety of different sort of things within the media, and I joined the BBC, and did all sorts of things there for many years, and then I went freelance and started writing. Um, and for years and years and years, I've just done writing and magazine work and bits of everything, but always within the media. Um, and then a few years ago, I went back to the BBC as a script editor in drama in BBC Wales, uh, where I then moved to and settled in Wales. Um, and I've recently left that and gone back to freelance writing. Um, so it's always sort of, always part of me. You can't you can't get the media out. I wouldn't ever want to go back to acting. Um, but I will always, I hope, stay tangentially connected to the media in one way or another. Mm. But it sounds from the conversation you had before that you were very much into the business as a child as well. I mean but you were interested mm. in directors and the yes. you know, technology even or Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the sad TV geek, basically. I'm <laughs> of that generation. We, we're all of that first generation where, where television is something we all grew up with and therefore it became an industry. When we were making it, it was still considered relatively new and, and people would look at television actors and producers and directors and go, oh, it's not the stage, darling, it's not the stage, it's just television. It's, oh. But we're of the, the people who've grown up with television and therefore it's natural, I think, that people of our age are the people who are creating television and moving around in television. But when Gary wasn't on set, he was in the production office. Well, also or in the editing oh, suites. I always sat in the editing suites because I wanted to see how yeah. directors work. I wanted to see mm. why things were shot in certain ways. And I, for many, many years, wanted to be a director and an editor. I, that really and you know he was in me. competition to you, he wrote a script. Oh, that's right. But you were the one. You were the one who always would come up to me and go, oh, I think you got it wrong here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. and really? Oh, you always. What, and a, you what an arrogant and person. No, 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 just, <laughs> no, no, no. The damn thing is you were often right. Uh, you really wouldn't go, oh, I wouldn't have written that scene this way. And there were times. He's made a living out I of did, it since. I did write the yeah. famous five script did when we t in the, yeah. the second series thing. Five go off in a boat, it was called, and I still have it. I seem to remember I came to a sticky end in that particular episode. You I think you fell in the water yeah, a few times. Yeah, like every available did. opportunity, you fell in the water. I would yeah. love to see that. Have you still got it? I've still got it, yes. It was all done up. The production office typed it all up and put it in one of those covers oh. for me and everything. Maybe I we could it. do it in our 40s. Yes, yes. So I'm, I'm working on a project at the moment. Yeah. Love. Yeah. <laughs> working on a project at the moment that uh, hopefully might, might reunite. If it, if it ever gets off the ground, it may actually reunite us in something in front of the cameras, Jennifer, rather than... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, so, yeah, so working on a, on a project there that um, might, may or may not, subject to rights issues, be, um, be something to watch the screens for. So. 
we can't get away from each other, can we? No. Yeah. <laughs> but well, it's lovely, you know. Yes. It's, it's very nice. But um, that's the thing that comes of doing something like this is that. For, for two years, you're very intense and yeah. become family. And then for a little bit, you know, you sort of spread. And then at some point, you, you meet up again. And suddenly you go, oh, it's like no years have gone past no, at all. And yeah. you just Except stay together. Except, of course, there is, you know, Michelle, Michelle. missing. Yes. 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 And, 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 and that's, that's the, the saddest sadness. thing. Yeah. Yes, yes, it, it is. is. And, and lots, lots of other people missing as well, of course. When you start looking at the, at the various directors and people that we work with. So mm. 30 years mm. is a long time, isn't mm. it? Mm. But there is a there's yeah. definitely a Michelle, Michelle shaped, shaped hole yes, there yeah. is. missing between yeah. us, yes, and, and I think if she if she were here, she would love this. I think yeah. she would be oh, so yes. proud of what we did then, and and to see this coming out on DVD and everything like that. I think Michelle would be as much in love with this as as we are. And I like to think she'd be laughing her head off. Yes. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm.